the tumor infiltrate and lymphocytes is a very it's not a very old, but it's an old story. Uh, a colleague of mine, Shireen Eloy, started studying this when we were fellows in 2003, and she was one of the first to report on the value, the prognostic value, and the, the predictive value of TUS in patients with breast cancer. Uh, what do you know that patients, for instance, if they are R2 positive disease, if they have high TUS, they tend to respond better to treatments, anti R2 drugs. If the patients are triple negative, and if they have a high tooth, they tend to respond better to chemotherapy and to immunotherapy as well. Uh, so those things you know. We know also that some patients with small tumors, node negative, the triple negative that they have been operated up front, they did not receive chemotherapy because it was not indicated in the Netherlands at the moment. Those patients with a very high tooth, they have an excellent prognosis at seven years. So those patients maybe do not need chemotherapy at all. Uh, so the tooth is a very interesting story. It needs to be validated in prospective trials. You know that it has an impact in prognosis. You know that some response or resistance to some drugs may be related to tooth, but today I cannot use this in clinical practice. It can give me a hint on the prognosis, whether this patient is going to respond super well and have a pathological complete response, whether this patient is going to respond well to chemotherapy or to anti-R2 or to immunotherapy, but it's not ready for use in clinic. There are some trials that have been developed now, particularly in the triple negative patients with small tumors, very high tools, they're going treat without chemotherapy. They're going to operate the patient, radiotherapy, and no chemotherapy. But this, to be ready for clinic, needs to be tested in clinical trials prospectively.